<laughs> we don't want to do no, that. we this, don't want to do that. That's a good company, <laughs> and uh, I think you'll enjoy the service. Well, let's get on with the show. What began as a pleasant day of duck hunting in the bayou country of southern Louisiana almost ended in tragedy, but instead, the chill winds and rough seas steered Gary Ponson into the loving arms of a loving God. 700 Club reporter Gorman Woodson brings us his miraculous story. Watch this. But when I came up the last time, I got the chill. And I knew. I knew that we were going to die. And I told him, we are going to die, Mac. I'm not leaving you. Jerry Ponson's story begins in the bayou country of southern Louisiana. Early one morning, Jerry, his friend Mac, and Mac's dog all set off to go duck hunting. And when we got out into the bay, the bay was rough. And going across the bay, the boat was taking a pounding. I can remember that. And when he turned the boat, a wave come over the back of the boat. And in a matter of seconds, we were standing inside the boat, and water was up to our neck. And the dog was swimming around in circles, and everything floated up. And I just told him, I said, Mac, we're in trouble. A push pole, which is a long pole, we pushed the P roads with in the shallow water, floated up, and I grabbed that and I stuck it in the mud. I said, Mac, hold on to that. It was a cold December morning. Jerry, Mac, and his dog Booga were trapped in a watery prison, stranded several hundred yards from shore. The sunken boat served as an unstable platform. It was just high enough to help keep their heads out of the water, but it was a struggle. At the time, Jerry felt he could swim to shore, but Mac was in his 70s, and Jerry felt he couldn't leave him in the frigid water. He also knew he couldn't make the long swim with Mac in tow. The men were prisoners of their wobbling platform. It was horrifying, because what was running through my mind was that nobody's coming today, and really and truly, I can't leave him. I can't leave him because of his health and his age. I said, I can't leave. I told myself, I said, I can't leave him. The dog kept swimming around in circles, and he'll come up to me, and his name is Boogan. I would say, Boogan, go back, go back, go back to the shoreline. I could see the shoreline, which was about a three-quarters of a mile away. And he would leave, and 20 minutes later, he would come back. As the hours passed, Mac began to show signs of hypothermia. Mac kept telling me, Jerry, I'm getting cold, I'm getting cold, I'm getting cold. And I said, Mac, just hang in there, Mac. Because of the rough weather, Jerry knew no other boats would be out in the bay. As the morning got along, the weather got rougher and rougher and rougher. Fishermen and crab trappers and trawlers, they'll never come out in that kind of weather. And I knew down deep inside that there would be no other boats out there that day. Well, the dog kept coming up to me and nudging me. And uh, I would hold him up by his, his, his collar and I could only hold, hold him up for about five minutes. And he would thrash around, thrash around. And then I let him go, and he starts swimming in circles. And I could see him saying, Mr. Jerry, help me. Help me, Mr. Jerry, help me. So I hold him by his collar again. And after about three or four times of that, I, I, that's when I told Mac, I says, Mac, I can't save you, Mac, and your dog. I'm making a choice, Mac. I'm going to save you, but I can't help your dog. And finally, the dog just took off. And in my thoughts, I thought the dog drowned. There's no way I said to myself that the dog could make it that long in these conditions. Jerry dove underwater several times to try to resurrect the boat. After these attempts failed, he realized they had been in the cold water for hours. And he also began to feel the onset of hypothermia. He felt the end was near, and Jerry cried out to God for help. And I said, Jesus, God, Please send us a boat. Please send us a boat. Don't let us die like this. It's a terrible death. Jerry believes God answered his prayer in a remarkable way only minutes later. And I looked up. I could see the top of a double rig, just the top of it, the two mast poles coming towards us. The boat kept coming and coming. It was a 72-foot trawl boat. And the first thing I seen on the boat is the name of the boat. The name of the boat is the Second Chance. And I knew we'd be all right after that. 
Mac was suffering from severe hypothermia. The Coast Guard sent a helicopter to airlift him to West Jefferson Hospital. Later that day, Jerry went to visit Mac. Well, on the way up to New Orleans, on Highway 23, it all hit me. Everything come upon me. Everything that happened. And I pulled over on the side of the road, and I cried for 20 minutes. And at that moment, I gave my heart to Jesus. And I thanked Jesus. And I asked for forgiveness. For 20 minutes, I cried. I cried, I cried, I couldn't stop. And it was wonderful, it was wonderful. I could feel the sins being lifted. I could feel all the guilt. Every guilt I had was lifted off of my shoulders. For years, relatives had prayed for Jerry to become a Christian. Through the prayers of my people that's been praying for me, my sister and my aunts and uncles. They've been praying for me for 15 years, and I surrendered, and that's where it took me to surrender. But what about Mac's dog, Booger? Jerry took out a boat to look for the dog's body. So we went down a little further, we came around a big point, and when we crossed that point, here on the shoreline was a dog sitting up there. High and dry, just as beautiful. And his words were, where have y'all been? And our heart bursted right there. We hugged and kissed him, and he was all frisky. Jerry feels God protected all three of them that day in the small boat on the bay and that God truly gave him a second chance. And when you're down and you're desperate and you have nowhere to go and nobody to talk to, Jesus is there. I'm living proof of it. Jesus is there and he will listen to you. How about that? When you're down and there's nobody to turn to, Jesus is there. You know, he really is. But we used to sing a song, take your heavy burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And there was an old song that people sang for so long, oh, what needless pain we bear, all oh, because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. God is there because he loves us. And Jesus said this. He said, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. Hitherto you've asked nothing. Ask. In other words, here's the Son of God, not saying, don't bother me, I'm too busy. <laughs> but it's an invitation.